ahead of COP28, the fossil fuel company are set to announce the next round of quarterly profits on the beat on the 3rd or 4th of November, while the world still faces the adverse effects of climate change and the cost of living crisis are town and cities scorch under relentless heart waves heart waves down in the in the terrestrial downpour and struggle to afford skyrocketing energy and food prices the so fossil fuel industry keep blocking real but Protecting our polluting our environment. This is intolerable state of affair. Must change and must change now. Around the world, people are uniting to take power and resources away from relentless fossil fossil energy. Fossil world people resources away from relentless fossil fuel company. Fossil fuel companies and ahead of COP28, the fossil fuel companies are set to announce their quarterly reports on the third to fourth of November. Why the world faces climate change effects and the drawn in torrential downpours and people struggle to afford the high rise prices of foods and energy. These fossil fuel companies keep blocking real climate action to protect their obsolete They keep digging, burning, and polluting our environment. This intolerable state of affairs must be stopped. There must be a change, and it must change now. Around the world, people are united to take power and resources away from the recklessness of these post-war companies and to propel the global renewable energy revolution forward. We stand at a pivotal moment where the undeniable impacts of climate crisis are ravaging our world. There is a need for our governments to put an end to the use of fossil fuels and redirect them into using solar and wind energy to power hundreds of millions of homes throughout the world. We have the solutions to address this crisis. But what is lacking is a political will. And there is a need for them, for the government, to increase the awareness of the use of this renewable energy. Wind and solar energy are breaking records, generating increasing amounts of clean energy each year. Our government can no longer bow down to the wickedness of the fossil fuel industry, protecting our future. It's imperative for them to, to channel these profits and pour them into financial resources to fund renewable energy on projects on global scale. So there is a need for our government to hold down these fossil fuel companies to pay up for their effects for the damages that have caused to the world. We call for a transition to a world powered by renewable energy that is just and accessible to everyone. This transition centers on energy justice. It empowers frontline and marginalized communities to lead the way. It ensures that corporations and countries responsible for the crisis should pay their fair share. Moreover, it supports workers and communities in transiting to a clean, sustainable economy that benefits all. A cleaner, more equitable world is within the reach. Let's far of the future of the world. Africa, despite contributing only 3% of the global emissions, is a continent that is severely affected by crisis. It faces climate-related challenges like white fires, heat waves, flooding, droughts, and impacts many lives in Africa. Africa is also faced with energy crisis, with over 600 million people lacking access to electricity. Meanwhile, the fossil fuel industry consumes 
to pollute and deepen their dependence on this fossil fuels, posing a great threat to more severe climate impact. Africa possesses abundant renewable energy resources that, if harnessed, could provide a cleaner, safer, and more secure energy future for the continent. The power of globalization is a chance for Africa countries to unite together to promote the use of renewable energy. By so doing, they aim to address these challenges of climate crisis and they contribute a better future for the both continents and the world entirely. This serves as an opportunity for Africa to showcase the significant energy resources we have and its potential to lead the way in the global transition to the world of clean energy sources. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, Africa energy potential is 1,000 times higher than its projected demand of electricity in 2040, meaning the continent has enough renewable energy potential to meet and surpass future demands. Africa has about 99% of the world's renewable energy potential than any other continent, and the highest solar energy potential per square meter of any region in the world. By 2030, the PV and the wind have the potential to supply about 27% of the continent's electricity. That is eight times more than in 2020. Together, we can build a strong and widespread support for climate leadership and generate the necessary momentum for a fast and just transition to a sustainable and equitable world. This involves communities working, taking the lead to transiting to 100% renewable energy for everyone while we stop and ban all the new construction of new oil projects. Thank you so much. In 2020, just last 
these responses must necessarily take resource at ecological justice dimension and must seek to ensure accountability, restoration, and reparation for years of destruction and neglect as protected against the emerging impact of climate change. For body communities and others that have won the front of extraction and Nigeria's work for over six decades deserve urgent and immediate attention. As recommendation, a few things that we said here, we need an immediate and comprehensive health audit of the entire Ogoni people. Speedy cleanup and restoration of the Ogoni environment and other parts of Niger Delta. Compliance uh, has also been, I'm here to say that it has also been impacted by the activity of oil and gas exploration. Um, Africa is um, 70 to 80 percent water, and our traditional occupation is fishing. But this has been largely affected and impacted by oil pollution. Africa local government is the host community for the Port Harcourt Refinery Company Jetty, where oil vessels come on a daily basis to load petroleum products. And so it has been impacted by oil pollution. I'll share my own personal experience briefly. Growing up, I didn't exactly grow up um, at home. I grew up in the city, but I was very much in touch with home. My grandma and um, other grandmother figures and relatives always sent us fish and various kinds of seafood from Isam, that's the local name for Perwinko, Mbe, Golo, these are local names, I'm not sure what the English names are, and um, lobsters, um, different kinds of seafood that Right now, I would say they are extinct. You can hardly find them. And if you find them, they are very expensive. But when we were much younger, in fact, it was like a souvenir when you went home. Anyone that traveled home, or anyone coming from that area, will come back with fish, different kinds and sizes of fish, both the fresh ones, uh, prepared in different ways. But all that is lost as a result of the impact of oil pollution and so it has um, um, it, it, uh, it, it has impacted on the oil on, on the coastal region the riverine area just imagine that area that's supposed to be maybe supplying seafood to other parts of nigeria just imagine the impact on other parts so as much as the focus today is on Ogoni land i'm here to also say that my community of Uga local government, as well as other areas in the Niger Delta, other communities in the Niger Delta are suffering from the impacts of oil and gas fossil fuel production. Thank you. Exploration activities, but as we see, slow or low attention from relevant stakeholders. All over the world, Fossil fuel has only been a benefit to the few and a gain to the majority. The plight of Ugodina is in no way different. With a population of about 1 million people, Ugodina, spanning through four local government areas of River State, namely Eleme, Thai, Bukana, and Pana is one of the worst oil polluted regions in the world. And since oil exploration began in the region in the late 1950s, the attendant spillage and the consequent pollution are on the rise as the year increased. And despite the halt in oil production in Ogoni since 1993, the facilities have never been the commission, nor has the polluted land been cleaned. With the continued neglect of the land or reputation has overshadowed a slight gain of reduced exploration activities in the land. 
all components that constitute the environment, which is the bedrock of the sustenance and livelihood of the people in Ogonina, has been impacted, in fact, contaminated by the excess of hydrocarbons flowing on the streams, fixed in their topsoil, flying in the air, and found in the groundwater. And these, when let loose as carbon, pose a great danger to the climate as a significant greenhouse gas that drives climate change. Therefore, this call and the photo exhibition that will follow this session will highlight some of the most recent specific impacts of oil spillage in Ogoni land. These images have been collected recently to show that there have been minimal changes since the Environmental Assessment Report by UNEP in 2011 and the launch of the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, IPRA, in 2016. And these are our demands. We want to see tangible commitments and total compliance with the cleanup and remediation efforts as recommended by UNEP EA report. The government, through the National Assembly, should institute an independent body to investigate and monitor IPREP's activities to identify both internal and external saboteurs to the cleanup of Ogoni land while they are brought to justice. A biannual progress report on the Ogoni land remediation project should be published and made available to the public. Now, ultimately, fossil fuel should be phased out. Polluting oil companies should pay off. And concrete and inclusive transition plan to renewables should be shaped out by the government. A just and fair transition requires both a rapid and equitable phase out of the fossil fuel as well as significant deployment of renewable energy that does not cause harm to communities or ecosystems. Access to clean and affordable and sustainable energy is a human right of which the Ogoni people deserves. So global funders must honor previous commitments and increase investment in decentralized renewable energy projects and address the energy needs of the communities while posting even standards. Posting fair companies such as Total, Shell, and the like should not be allowed to operate with impunity, ceaselessly raking in record breaking profits as their operations threaten the well being of people and our planet. Just like yesterday, Shell. Re released their uh, third quarter profit running into billions of dollars to the detriment of the people where those oil are taken. So it's time for governments to hold them accountable, make them pay for their polluting practices and channel finances into people-centered renewable energy. Renewable energy can facilitate a livable future of communities on the front line of climate crisis, whose locales are increasingly being rendered uninhabitable by the crisis. We have the solutions to deliver the future we want, only if government state measures we measure to power up people-centered renewable energy system. Thank you very much for your attention. that urgent need for serious action. All these pipes are old. There is need to carry out the integrity test on them. And that's why you keep having these oil spills here and there. Sometimes they accuse community boys of you know, being behind.
pipeline, some of this is there. Of course, you know how long this, you can look at this pipeline. It's not, it's not new, maybe it's been there for a very long time. So, yes, so for that you can take, you can.